is snowy out there, Trainiacs. That was a 11K run in crazy snow. Here, I'll show you before I tell you about the metrics. Look at this. Look at this. We got a solid four, six inches of snow this week. And it stays. It doesn't go away. So what I did there was just an 11K run averaging, this isn't gonna impress you, five minutes, 41 seconds per kilometer. I, I, 10 minute miles, but the idea was do the first 80% at sub maffetone method heart rate of 139, alternating each kilometer going nasal breathing, mouth breathing, nasal breathing, mouth breathing, and at five kilometers, I started doing trail running, so trails in that all of a sudden brings the pace way down. And then for the last two and a bit kilometers, the last 20% go fast. And in this kind of traction, fast is like 414 kilometers, somewhere around a 636 mile. In that, I realized that over the course of 2018, these are my favorite shoes. These are the Skechers Go Run Ride 7s. They're not terribly new, but they have been my favorite all around shoe. So today I'm gonna talk about why and why not. All right, after a swim and yeah, that was, that was slow. All right, so let's dive into these Skechers Go Run Ride 7s. These are not new. I'm gonna use this one because it's got the Stride foot pod. And give a little bit of love to my boys over at Stride. So this was released in early 2018. It's been well received. It is ranked in the top 1% of all running shoes on run repeat. Now run repeat is not like the be all end all of running shoe rankings out there, but it's a good indication of how the general reviews have gone. Think about this as like what a Hoka Clifton was before they went and changed the midsole and got away from that marshmallowy cushion. Apparently it's a little bit more stiffer this year, whereas this is a lot more like what I remember from the Hoka Clifton 2 and Hoka Clifton 3, which I liked a lot. And I like this a lot. It's light coming in at 9.4 ounces, but it feels more like a, like an eight ounce sort of shoe. It has a lot of cushion. It's got a 30 millimeter heel, a 24 millimeter toe, so a six millimeter heel to toe drop, which is kind of on the high end, but it's not like this is clunky because it's so light, so soft. It rides really nice. It rides kind of like a racing flat. Like I find that I am able to easily do my base miles, my very steady, long, slow, heart rate dictated kind of miles. But at the same time, today, I was easily able to get down to, even in crappy conditions, a 410 per kilometer. Last week, I was able to get these down to a 340 kilometer and it didn't feel clunky doing it. So they fit true to size and they've got some fancy marketing speak for the flight gen ultra light midsole technology and M strike to encourage mid or forefoot striking. This is marketing gobbledygook. There really isn't nothing special about the midsole of this, like say a Nike Zoom Fly. It does have a little bit of rubber on the outsole so that it lasts a little bit longer and you've got better tread, but it's a running shoe sole. That is, however, why I like it. It's a really good meat and potatoes, like all day, all run. If you only had one running shoe that you could buy, I'd be cool with this. Not like, not like in the case of the Skechers Go Run Razor 3. This is strictly for your speed work and it doesn't really have a big shelf life. It's also quite a bit more expensive. This has a much longer shelf life and is cheaper. And that's always been my biggest issue with the Skechers is that while they are cheap, 
they also don't last a long time. So when people start comparing Skechers to other shoes, they're like, oh yeah, I gotta throw them away right away. But I was able to also say, well, you probably only paid about 90 or $100 for them instead of 150, 175, like some of the more high-end running shoes are getting to be these days. And on a dollar per mile basis, these were always able to justify it because they were cheaper, however they lasted, not quite so long. It all just kind of worked out in the end. These you can find for as low as $89 on running warehouse. And I would actually say that over the course of 2018, yeah, these are my favorite shoe, but there hasn't been a shoe I've been gaga about. What I tend to look at is, do I just gravitate more towards one shoe or another? That kind of dictates what I like. Do I tend to gravitate more towards one smart bike trainer on Zwift or another? Yes, right now I am just loving the kicker climb. And more often than not, the Stride Foot Pod is staying on this shoe because this is what I'm using most of the time. I've got it for the longer runs like today. I've used it for some of the speed work on the treadmill. I have also done a little bit of like warm up with this shoe and then switch over to a faster shoe. Like I always want to include this shoe in my meat and potatoes, like the vast majority of my running because it is so cushioned, takes the load off my body, but still allows my foot to flex nicely without being too terribly constricted. Now a few things about the shoe. Number one, it isn't great for off-roading at all. While the sole is nice and big and it is going to accept and kind of go over a lot of the rocks that you might encounter and it's perfectly fine for that, this isn't a really gnarly tread pattern. The tread pattern is very much built for the road. So if you do want to get just one shoe, don't expect this to perform super well if you're going off-road at all. Next thing is the upper on this, it doesn't breathe super well. So while it is very nice and smooth, all of the Skechers shoes are, I've never had an issue with blistering in the Skechers. This is a fairly tight pattern weave on this shoe. So your feet will get sweaty if you start using this barefoot, which is odd because of all of the running shoes that Skecher comes out with, they have included this heel loop so that you can snap it on in triathlon, but in triathlon, we need a little bit better breathing. Also, there's a fair bit of padding on the tongue. There is also a little bit of padding all around here. It's all things that I like, but it's also things that if I were racing in this shoe barefoot, it would just be a little bit too much. And then the last thing about this shoe is that it doesn't look great. Look at all the colors online and um, they're very blah. You did not shock an Ami with these and your design pattern sketchers. It rides really nice, but yeah, yeah, does not look great. Like, look at that. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to get a thumbnail that's like, let's actually do that. Thumbnail, let's go like this, and then we'll go right up there. This is how we make a thumbnail, people. So if you're looking for that Hoka-like feel of a lot of cushioning, but you don't like where Hoka has gone over the course of 2018, this might be the shoe to replace that. Hop on getting it very quickly because right now coming to the end of 2018, it's on sale for peanuts and just don't expect it to last super long, but know that you're getting yourself a decent shoe and at that price, it is going to kind of cancel itself out and make sense dollar per mile. So over the course of 2018, favorite shoe is the Skechers Go Run Ride 7. Wouldn't have thought that I would have said that about two months ago. Nope, nope, nope. All right, Trainiacs, if you aren't already subscribed, we do lots of shoe reviews here on strictly incredibly fast shoes. So if you wanna make sure that you get all of those, hit the subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed, I actually, let me know in the comments below what your favorite shoe has been of 2018. Later, Trainiacs.